Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Mentor My Mix podcast. And today I've got a woman who indeed was built for greatness. Hi. Yeah, what's up, Mariam? Hi, everybody. Hi, hey. Greg. Thank Hi. you for having me. Of course. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Mariam. Yeah. Well, this track that we opened up with here has also kind of set up a big year for you, too, hasn't mm. it? Huh? Yeah. T- tell us a little bit about this track and what's happened with it uh, in this past <laughs> year here. It's called Built for Greatness, right? Yes, uh-huh. yes. Um, so I actually wrote this song with uh, this guy named John Buchanan last year because um, I'm signed with Universal for publishing and uh-huh. they put us together. Yeah. And um, we wrote this song and everybody loved it so much and it got picked up as the promotion song for um, uh, Michelle Obama and Oprah's Netflix special. And then it was like posted all over Michelle Obama and Oprah's page, which was really cool. And then it was used and it was used as a promotion for the WNBA like early in February. And it's like getting picked up a lot too, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Pretty big for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously to get into a Netflix special with uh, wow. Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama. I, I have it up here on the screen. Let's, let's just play that opening segment of that here a second because it, it's just so it, it's just so stunning to be able to see this. No With <laughs> yeah, the woman who needs no introduction is kind of almost you, isn't it? But, I know. I thought they were saying uh-huh. me, but no. Uh, uh. The book came from people asking. So it's pretty yeah. cool. They they're you playing the track all the way through emotions. in the background here, yeah. and then bringing it up to emphasize. There yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the thing that is small so cool. Yeah. Um, how did that get placed like that? Do you did you have any involvement, or was that Universal doing uh, the placement? No. Um, actually, I think um, uh, I'm signed with a distributor, um, Venice Music, which is Troy Carter's company. Uh huh. I don't know if you know Troy Carter. Um, I don't personally. He, he, but he was. Uh, oh, but you know who he is. Yeah. Tell uh, us okay, about. Yeah, yeah, tell so, us about so, Troy. Yeah, yeah. So Troy Carter has a, a distribution company called Venice Music, and um, I'm signed with this distribution company. And so they they uh, took uh, took a hold of the song too. So so uh, Universal and um, uh, handles it on the publishing side, so they can they can like um, uh, go out and like license it to people and like pitch it to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like uh, v- Venice Music, which is um, the distribution company, they um, pitch it to people too, and it got picked up through them. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And what? How did to you go about side. getting the deal with Universal? What What triggered that? Uh, you want to uh, know the story? It's of very, course. It's actually, pretty fabulous. Yeah. We so, wanted every inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> so I, I I was in New York and I was like I grew up in a very Muslim household so I was like not really allowed to uh, be a singer but I was like I'm gonna do it anyway because this is my life. Uh huh. So uh-huh. I moved to L. A. January 16 uh-huh. of 2017. Yeah. January 18, 2017. I wrote a song called leave just to talk about like leaving everything behind and like just moving on to next up it got heard by universal and this guy named um, jason markey from um who was a music director uh music supervisor president music supervisor of, of sdx studios the film studios and um i got signed to universal a week after which does not happen this is crazy that's amazing and when was that how many years ago was that now? uh 2017 wow yeah that's incredible yeah at what point did you connect with your voice and say i know this is this is what i'm gonna do um i'm a singer i remember being 11 or 12 and i was like trying to sing for the neighbors and stuff mm-hmm. like put on a little show and i was so shy mm-hmm. and then my sisters and i would um pretend that we were at destiny's child in a group <laughs> and stuff and like i knew that i knew how to sing when i would withhold my gifts like i'd be like no i'm going to sleep you know like uh-huh. i'll be a diva about it uh-huh. so i knew i know how to sing that oh. <laughs> when i was needed in the group uh-huh. but it was just like a home group it wasn't a, anything serious and at what point did fashion connect to the music for you because you yeah. fashion and music yeah. seem totally intertwined and it's a big part of your message how did mm-hmm. that come about um, I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was younger, actually. I used uh-huh. to make clothes for my Barbies. I made clothes for myself all the time. I still yeah. make clothes for myself. Yeah. yeah. I made clothes for myself in college. Uh-huh. I always love fashion. So uh-huh. it was just a natural part of self-expression, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it's it's a part of your image, too. Mm-hmm. I think that, that you project. The image right. of self-love comes with the fashion because yeah. the fashion is a part of that self-love. Yeah. And then you project that back out to the world, right? It's full and, circle. Yeah, it's full circle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually very interesting. Like A lot of things that I have done in the music industry, besides like Universal and the people that I'm signed to, because there's a the music industry, but then like I, I feel like I move outside of it mm-hmm. and like I find people through their interests and their passions yeah and um, 
the Burning Man community has been very influential uh, in terms of like how I move and stuff. Um, like in terms of the, the flow states, like you know people's frequencies and and you know the the vibes and the energy and stuff. Um, what Burning Man for me has taught me was like to, that I I'm not that weird. <laughs> and um, there's plenty of other <laughs> there's ones other out there. Weird people, <laughs> and that intention really really matters. So I'm uh-huh. very intentional about everything that I do, and um, I just I, I love everybody that I've met through the Burning Man community, and um, I feel like it's really allowed me to really think outside the box and really really be an artist and not just think about and 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 think about like uh, m- music and what I do as an offering and not just. You know, as a business, because it's not a business. Like I don't, I don't think <laughs> business should be next to the music. But obviously, yes, everything's a business. And for anybody listening, how do you go about getting gigs at Burning Man? What do you, what do you do? Like this year, you're gonna play Robot Heart, aren't you? Yes. And you've got your shadow that's going to yeah. come along with you, huh? My shadow. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about that concept in a minute here. But talk about first. Did I tell you about the shadow last year? Or you did not. No. I did not? Okay, because no. I've been talking about it to people for a while. And yeah. then, like, the people I talked about it with, they're like, whoa, you actually did it. I'm like, yes, I did. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. I th- at first, when I first saw it, I thought it was some technology. No, it was not. Yeah. And then I realized that you really, like... Yeah had somebody being a shadow yeah. ego yeah. that was kind of like a shadow self your darkness your yeah. light you're like the dark and the light yeah, and exactly so all right so you're going to do that at yeah. robot heart this year yes and you're also going to do it at play alchemist yeah play alchemist yeah mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. so so you got to check out mariam doing her thing at play alchemist <laughs> with this my year shadow work. with your shadow so all right let's talk about the shadow work what's the what's the deal with that well because i'm like with my music and everything and just uh my whole message in life i'm saying that it's time to go inside like when we talk about self-love yeah it's, a, it's about going inside like we're looking for answers on the outside but everything is inside like you know and oh, yeah. love as a source uh-huh. and so i wanted to um how do i actually physically represent that and so i was like why don't i have a shadow version of me, you know. Then after that, I'm gonna have a light being. So I'm gonna have like a my silhouette, but completely made of lights, and it's gonna be like just radiating light. Uh huh. Yeah, and then Amazing. a full circle moment, you know. Well, I did. I was able to. I, I, I pulled up your Instagram account, mm-hmm. and for anybody following, you should check out Mariam Music uh, on Instagram. Follow her. She's already got almost 180 thousand followers. Uh, what incredible but um i I wanted to pull this up because there was a cool video here i just want to pop in of you walking with your shadow here let's just check this out you can see it on the screen here um over there so there you are there's your shadow and the shadow's got the same exact hairdo as you do Mm -hmm. now how did i I made this outfit you made that outfit yeah i did i did just like you made your hairdo yes i did Uh uh-huh yes i did that is incredible Mm-hmm. And how, so it's amazing. I mean, it's really, conceptually, it's super cool. Thank you. Um, but how does that work in a performance? How do you guys do that? You guys dance together? Yeah, you... we dance together, we're coordinated. Everything. Uh-huh. I mean, it's going to be bigger. Uh-huh. It's, I, I want it to be big. Yeah, of course you do. It's going to be big. Do they get to sing too, or are you doing um, it Maybe. Uh-huh. I think maybe um, eventually I, I would want to have uh, shadows walking around in the crowd playing drums. Mm-hmm. Or like I have like a whole band of my shadows. Like I'll just, you know, mm-hmm. playing bass and doing different things, interacting with the crowd. Mm-hmm. Just to show the ins- the inner work, you know? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is just too cool. So I hope you got a chance to check that. Do you have a music video? Oh, here. There is a shot. Here, Here's a shot of you guys performing together, right? Yeah. You can see it just a little bit on the screen there. You oh, see yeah. that? Yeah. I need yeah. to post that, the high-quality versions of that. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to bring that up just to get people a sense of what that looks like. Yeah. It's just so fun. It's really yeah. cool. That was at Area 15 in Vegas. That was at Area 15 in Vegas. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Well, how long did it take you to discover this style that you kind of invoke now? Is this something that you've been refining or did you just like this is me? You know, uh, or, refining, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. I, I think when I came out of the, the the Peruvian jungle, I was like just very determined to live my best, freest life and like not be controlled. Cause I used to I used to wear weaves and stuff and like wigs and stuff and like it's because of you know uh, it had to do with, with self hate. You uh-huh. know, and um, uh-huh. being told that my hair wasn't good enough as a black person. You know, like uh-huh. just all the cues that I got from society. And so when I came out of the jungle, I was like. Wow, like what is my? I I started growing my natural hair. Then I had like an afro. Then I was just doing my natural hairstyle. And then I was like, I actually can be anything that I want to be in life. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what does my highest self look like? Yeah. 
this yeah. is what she looks like. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Well, this is just one version. Uh, I have many different high I was going to say, I mean, you, you have, you've, you've done fashion shoots. Yeah. Right, you've got yeah. a lot of different higher selves mm-hmm. that I see being channeled through yeah. all of these different. You know, I don't want to say it's the fashion that's mm-hmm. driving yourself, but I think you drive the fashion in many ways. Yeah, right? and vice versa. And yeah. vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Do you get called to do uh, many shoots now? Is that a part of what you do? Yes, I. Uh-huh. Uh, so talk about manifestation. So and not being scared to manifest. I mean, like, I, I, I'm not scared of rejection anymore, and I know I don't take things personally. Personally, So if I like somebody or I like their work, I'll message them on Instagram or something and be like, you know, I wish I was working with you or something. Some mm-hmm. reply, some don't. Yeah. But this one time, you, Lady Gaga stylist, Nicola Formichetti, I was like, I've, I've been obsessed with him for so long, and I was like, I wish he was my stylist. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to message him on Instagram. Now that I have a blue check, maybe he'll, check, he'll like check. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. So um, I messaged him in 2020. Which might have been the perfect time because nobody was working at the time. Right. So they're like, you know, I think it was serendipitous. So I was like, um, I wish you were my stylist. He messaged me back and was like, your voice is insane. Bless me. And he's been helping me with styling since. But I do I do that, miss my styling myself too. Now you see, that's <laughs> worth noting. Anybody listening, you got to reach out. Yeah. You feel, you're feeling somebody. Mm-hmm. Get out there and let him know it, right? Yeah, and know. and then he responded. And then you guys, he ended up styling you in a music video, yeah. didn't he? Which music video was that? Uh, Love Now. Let's see. I think, yeah. here, here, let's take a quick look at that, shall he, we? He added me to, um, I, I was on the cover of his Web3 magazine too, which is amazing. All right. Here, yeah. here let's, let's take a little listen to Love Now here. And we can watch the video a little bit here too. Um, here's the video for Love Now. It's on YouTube. Um, and this is... Mariam, check Been out. And there's the director Ivan Ray Fine. Yeah, and, and who's the uh, designer again on this? What's his name? Um, the designer of this outfit, I don't know exactly. But in in, in uh, a lot of the outfits that I wore here is my uh, good friend actually, Lesia, who um, who has this thing, um, a company called Lever Couture. Uh-huh. Lady Gaga wears her stuff. Everybody wears her uh, outfits. Yeah. Wow. I mean, these are stunning outfits here. These are yeah. really yeah. something else. She's, she's from Ukraine, too, so mm-hmm. we do a lot of, like, Ukraine outreach and stuff. What would it take for us to love now? What would it take to let our gods down? I know we can change, cause yeah, so we know how. Made that. What would it take for us to love now? To love now. To love now. To love now. Um, the message w- is love now. So I'm asking the question, what would it take for us to love now? So when I, I, I don't want to tell us, you know, like what it is, because I feel like we have the answers ourselves. Yeah. So that's why um, I say, what would it take for us to love now? So that you can go home and ponder over it, you know? Right, yeah. Oh, like, what are the solutions? Right. It, it's, I like it because it's not preaching. Yeah. You know? I try not to be preaching because it, it can, it can see, like, w- when you do... The type of uh, music that I do or, like, the messages that I'm trying to portray, it can sound preachy. And it's like, oh, please. Go. Like, I don't want to be preached to either. Right. <laughs> well, but it's it's it works so well because it is. It's evocative. Makes you think, right? Okay. And I think you you do that you do that in such a, a graceful um, sort of way Grace here. Bit. How did you connect with Robot Heart in particular? So, um, you, you know, the, the Summit series? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I was uh, asked to perform at the Summit series last oh, year. Wow. So I did a show and I did the closing ceremony, which was really, really cool. Yeah. And um, I ended up uh, being in a car with uh, Jason Swamy, who's like the director, one of the directors of Robot Heart. He runs Robot Heart, basically, the foundation. And um, it's a funny story because I was very stressed that day when I got there to the, the, the Summit. I was rushing to get to the events that were happening from my hotel. And... Um, I, I just I took a moment while I was doing my makeup and I was like, you know what? Just calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. Calm yeah. Down, calm down. Yeah. It's all gonna be good. And it's like, what will be? What will yeah. be? And so uh-huh. I ended up. I because I did that and I wasn't rushing. If I went in a car before or a car after, I would not be in the same car as Jason Swami, who is the Booker for Robot Heart. Uh-huh. You know. Uh-huh. So I was like, you know what? Just calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. And that's what happened. <laughs> So you got in the car with him? Yes, and we were talking, got to uh-huh. talking. Then uh-huh. he heard me sing at Summit, uh-huh. heard me do, do um, uh, How Will I Know, because um, uh-huh. they asked me to, to close the ceremony with some of my songs, and also How Will I Know, because they saw a video of me, um, How Will I Know is a Whitney Houston song. How will I know? Yeah, and, um, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I did that song, and he was like, okay, 
we're going to book you from about her. And then they flew me out to um, Miami last year to um, sing at the Robot Heart Foundation oh, um, fundraiser for uh-huh. Art Basel. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. So that's, that speaks so much to just serendipity, huh? Yeah, just calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything's going to gonna be just fine. Uh, if just, we just learn to get out of our own yeah, way. Yeah, huh? just let it go. Let trust it go. in the flow. Trust so it. I trust in the flow so much now. If something doesn't work out, I'm like, okay, something better is going to come. And oh, it's okay. Lord. And the clearer you are. Mm-hmm. The you got to be very clear about you what gotta you want. You got to be really clear about very what you clear. want. Because yeah. the universe listens when you're clear. It does. It does. You I, always get what you want. You don't I think you do. I have learned a hard lesson with yeah. that. Oh, my God. Yeah. You have to be so clear. When you're wishy-washy or you let others mm. influence your decision-making, yeah. that's that's where you lose your power. That's how you Fast. give your power yeah. away. Yeah. And don't I've learned that. Away. That's a hard lesson to learn. Mm. Yeah. 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 So if anybody take anything away from this... I'd say that's a big one right yeah, there. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, that's a big one. You've got to deal with Universal, which mm-hmm. is amazing. That's yeah. cool. And they put you with different people to collaborate. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Do you then also seek out other collaborators to yes, work for with? Yes, sure. yeah. Yeah, and, and what are your, how do, you, uh, how do you go about doing that? What's your criteria for doing that? I feel like we're, we tend to put people in a box all the time in the music industry, and I feel like that's what I wanted to avoid from the beginning. I'm like, uh, it, and that that has been the hardest thing for me because people want to put you in a box. They're like, well, where does she belong? Is she R&B? Is she soul? Is she this and this and that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, so they don't know where, so I had a hard time getting bookings and all these things because bookers want to know exactly like who you, you know, like yes. who is she? Yes, that's like, hard. Yeah. And, and so um, I was like, and, but I knew that I, I'm good at many different things and I want to be able to do anything that I want to do. Uh, I, I just reach out, if I like somebody's music, and I want to work with you. I'm. I reach out to different people. Like I. I do. I, I'm all over the place, which is fine. It's not really all over the place because music is just music, and it's like, you can't really categorize it or try to tell people like, oh, this is what you should be doing, and it's just the box. Like, yeah, the box, the box. But I think it, it, to a point there, you have the voice, mm. and the voice in many ways defines the sound okay. of what you're doing. Yeah. And you have a very keen sense of melody, mm. and melody is key to good songwriting. What's your what's your favorite way to work? How do you like? To work uh, in it's different all the time. Some people uh-huh. sometimes people send me stuff and uh-huh. I I work with it. Um, but I usually like to um, when I'm in the studio, I like to work with uh, the producers from the beginning just so that we can uh, uh, f- flow together because my style is different than like what they might send me and I might, I'll be working within the parameters of their uh, structures mm-hmm. as opposed to just. Um, creating a vibe that works for both of us. Um, and at first, um, I was very insecure when I used to go to uh, production sessions and I would let the producers do, just just do what, what they felt like doing because I didn't I didn't feel like I, I went, uh, I knew the language because I didn't go to music school because I wasn't really, I wasn't allowed to do music when mm-hmm. I was younger. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know the language of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And so um, I would just give my power away, but Thanks to you too, like for giving me um, the production classes because now I know exactly the language. I know what I want. I know what I want to say. I'm yeah. not like scared when I go to the studio uh-huh. to say what I want and uh-huh. how I want it to sound. Uh-huh. And so I'm ex- very excited for the music that I'm releasing That's more great. now because I, I have more of um, control over it. Well, now you, you've, you're going to be releasing an EP or an album this year? Uh, an right? album next year. Next but year. But I'm starting with the songs okay. soon. Yeah. Well, I, I got a, you sent me a link uh, to a private SoundCloud, and I was really impressed with how many tracks you have on there that are yeah. unreleased. Yeah. That's a lot of unreleased music on I there. I know. So, but, but, but that's why I like the, the whole um, uh, aspect of uh, DJing, too, because I can make a song in the same day and, like, play it out, you know? Uh-huh. Like, I'm not limited to yeah. the, the whole industry of, like, oh, you have to wait, like, two months to release it. Oh, is this going to go in a album or is this not going to think I have so much music I want to actually release it like I didn't make this to just be sitting there of course not so how are you going to go about releasing this what's what's the plan do you have a plan for it um yeah so um uh, I'm releasing my first album it's a heartbreak album Mm -hmm. uh and is more classic uh you know the Uh vocals are the main thing and Uh I'm talking about heartbreak which is a universal issue because most of my stuff is about revolutionary stuff empowerment stuff but I'd had to I felt like I had to get that out the way first Mm -hmm. Um, because it was urgent, mm-hmm. and so um, <laughs> my first <laughs> my my first album is a heartbreak album, and I'm very very excited about it. And um, I've been, I'm going to tour it in Brazil. The, m- most of my fan base is in Brazil. One of my um, I, I created a video that went viral in um, in 2020 in Brazil because uh-huh. everybody had extra hands on it, you know, time. Uh-huh. And so um, 
so I'm gonna gonna be actually doing it in Brazil. And uh, one of the songs is called Changing, and uh, it's gonna be my first single, and uh, it's coming out in September. Um, the like the third week of September about, yeah. and uh, the song was on Grey's Anatomy earlier this year, and oh, it's no not kidding. even out yet, which wow. is amazing. Yeah, so uh-huh. everybody has been asking me about the song, and I'm like, oh, it's coming. Uh huh. So does this fall under the auspices of your Universal deal, your Universal uh, Publishing deal? No, the the producer of the song sent it to one of the music supervisors there, oh, okay. and they reached out to me too, and they're like, we love your music. I'm like, yes, thank you. I have uh-huh. more songs. I have more songs. So that's cool. So you got a deal with Universal, but it's not exclusive. You uh, can do... no, it's, it's it's exclusive. It is but exclusive. Yeah, yeah. So okay. they, they yeah. I'm I mean, if anybody wants to license my music, they have to go through Universal. That's just okay. what it is. Yeah. Okay, I got you. That yeah, makes, that it's makes, not. Yeah. That makes sense. A hundred percent. I get it. Does that inspire you? Do you do you get inspired by young artists as well, or yeah. do you always look up above you and say, "I want to be like that"? No. How does that How does that work for you? A funny story. So when I was in um uh studying abroad in the UK, I went to um Liverpool and I went to the house of um, John Lennon and Paul McCartney's house. And um, hearing their stories of how they began, like, made me realize that I could do it, too, because I was like, oh, like, they wrote this song in this bedroom? What? Mm -hmm. You know, like, they Mm -hmm. had humble beginnings, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, we tend to look at people at the height of their career, but people come from, you know, all over. So true. I know. And it's just, like, that, that moment, that's, like, significant moment for me. Um, and the reason why I even went there, serendipitous too, I never used to go to class in college, but I did on my last, <laughs> <laughs> this, on my last, on, I, this, I, I went up for the test. And so in in my history class, right, there was like, um, uh, it was like what, one of those open uh, lecture halls and yeah. you could come sit anywhere. Yeah. So at the lecture hall, uh, it was in history class and like, um, uh, we had to like write an essay, an eight page essay on like any anything about history but it was assigned to us and it was based on where you were sitting so if i was sitting at this exact spot and i got you could have got anything from you know like about you know a chinese that a dynasty anything okay oh, in history oh, i, I got to write that i got a paper that i was supposed to write about sergeant pepper album no i know what? and that led me on a journey uh-huh. to like discovering about the beatles and stuff uh-huh I don't know. That's so that's so crazy. And then I went that's to their awesome. I went to their house in Liverpool. I, I I did a tour of their house uh-huh. in Liverpool, and I was like, and I saw the humble beginnings. That's like very. It was actually very cool. And I was like, oh, they lived in this little place, and they had dreams to do this, and they did it. Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. So do, I want to understand that better. Mm-hmm. So you did you then go and. Go to Liverpool to study about the Beatles after you got that assignment. Uh, yeah, As so the, the it was yeah, it was the it was the last. No, no, no. Um, uh, I didn't go for for the assignment. Um, uh-huh. it was when I was uh, studying abroad in London in my last semester. Um, uh-huh. but this was before my last semester. I see. Um, because I had to take extra courses because I wasn't the best student. Uh-huh. So I had like three <laughs> extra classes maybe that I had to take. So I was like, I cannot do it in Buffalo no more. I'm gonna go to England. Oh, so I did, I and see. while I was there, I did. Yeah, but that started me on my on my journey. Um. <laughs> to, <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, you know, so, so Beatles were an influence for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's just, incredible. Just the things how many they people did. they've influenced. Yeah, amazing. they did a lot of amazing things, and you yeah. know, they were very. Um, uh, I I liked the way that they lived their lives, and they did not take uh, crap from anybody, and they. If they believed in something, they did it. You know, like mm-hmm. um, uh, championing um, Jimi Hendrix and like black artists and stuff, and mm-hmm. like just they were just like, no, like this is not right. And mm-hmm. they they were really about love and stuff. So I really um, I mess with them for that reason. Yeah, well, and yeah. going to India and studying Hinduism and being a part of that early, yeah. very early part of that movement. Yeah, you know, before many white Westerners really mm-hmm. knew anything about that. So mm-hmm. I, that that always that. Uh, definitely impressed me. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're coming to the end of our little hour together. Mm-hmm. I know this just went, flew right by. I'm just like, oh. I enjoyed I, the conversation. Yeah, Thank I could you. be doing this for hours with you. <laughs> but you did. Um, well, maybe I should be your co-host for now. Yeah, we, we could talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we were going to play another track, though. Um, you had two other. What was the other track? It's Me? Oh, yes. Play It's Me. Okay. Because- Okay. That one is really cool. I'm gonna be playing it at Burning Man with Pavo uh-huh. at Robot Heart. Pavo from Above and Beyond, who yes. owns the Anjuna Deep label and yes. stuff. Um, I'll be playing it with them at Burning Man uh, on the Robot Heart before I do my set. Oh, that is gonna be epic. Yeah. <laughs> and this song was played on BBC Radio One recently too. Um, and it's just been a, a phenomenal song, and people have just been responding very well to it because I say, "Do you know what love is? It's uh-huh. me. I'm love." You yes. know, and it's like an epiphany situation. Right. And uh, Pavo um, and Spencer Brown 
was one of my good friends um, who I did the track with. They they told me that they played it last year at Burning Man and Sunrise, and everyone was crying. I'm like, oh, I cannot wait for that this year. Oh, that's so <laughs> beautiful. Be yeah. Wow. All right. So this is It's Me. Uh, this is out. You can listen mm-hmm. to it on Miriam's uh, Spotify. There we go. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, look at that. I will never take my life for granted. I can't give fear a place to hide. Now, now my mirror's on the inside. So. Love the way that drops in. Ooh, that felt so good. Ooh, yeah. This is such a good, it's such a feel good, you know? It's such a feel good. I want to sing it. I, I go by based on feelings now. Uh-huh. I'm not going to release anything unless I have yeah, to do uh huh. Yeah. What love is yeah. It's me. Yeah. I love. I love. I saw a little clip of you doing this with a choir. Yeah. What was that about? I got invited to sing for the Association of Music Producers uh-huh. um, or, um, this year, and um, they had a choir with us on stage, and I was like, oh, I got to think about my social media and content, so I got to, like, you know, uh, try to get some moments, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, choir, can you learn this really quick? And they learned it right away, and they Oh, my God, it. the harmony was epic. I know. The they, harmony was, it was on oh. the spot. It was all on the spot. Oh. You see? Uh-huh. Well, when you know what love is, when you know what love is, look at what happens. I know. Self-love is the key. Self-love is the key. Thank you, Mariam. This Thank has been so amazing. Much. Thank you so what much. What a for deep having pleasure me. for having you on this show. Gracias. Yeah, I think learning your story and hearing your journey is, is a beautiful thing and wishing you so much success. So Thank much you. success. And obviously, success. if you want to uh, find out more about Mari M, we got... Uh, my socials, Mari M Music, M-A-R-I-E-M-E Music. Uh-huh. It's all I ever see. All throughout. All right. At Mari M Music. Yeah. So um, thanks for it's listening to the Mentor My Mix podcast. Uh, as always, if you want to make a suggestion for any guests you'd like to see on the show, or uh, if you got a track you'd like to submit, what would it take follow us on Instagram me? at mentormymix.com on the web, and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Change, thanks so much. We know how. Have a good day, everybody. What would it take for us to love now? To love now. Mentor My Mix is made possible by Pure Mind Music and Audio Production Institute. Evolve your sound with expert trainers and up-to-date courses designed to fit the needs of emerging artists and producers. Go to puremind.com for details about the San Francisco campus and online programs. Remember, if you have a guest suggestion or want to contact me for any reason, we have a contact form on the Mentor My Mix website. That's mentormymix.com. Or feel free to email me at greg at mentormymix.com.